In today's episode, you will learn how to control an LED using a push button and how to use a flake to stop the unnecessary repetition of code. The components that we will be needing for this tutorial are number one, Raspberry Pi. The one I'll be using is Raspberry Pi 3B+. You can also use any other version of Raspberry Pi. Number two, 5 volt 2 amps adopter. Or you can also use a power bank. Number three, an LED, the longer leg is the anode and the shorter leg is the cathode. Number four, a 330 ohm resistor. Number five, some male to female type jumper wires. Number six, a push button and finally number seven, a 10K resistor. These components can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Let's get started. This schematic is designed in Gatesoft Eagle 9.1.0 version. If you want to learn how to make schematics and PCBs then watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. This is the circuit which I explained in my previous tutorial. Let's add a push button and a pull up resistor. So now you can see a push button is connected with pin number 12 of the Raspberry Pi. Now let me explain how this will work. As you can see when the button is not pressed, the 5 volts will be available on pin number 12. But the time when we press the push button, then ground will be connected with pin number 12, which will be used as a signal that the button is pressed. These are the connections that I did in previous tutorial, which I explained in very detail. If you want to learn in detail about these connections and header, then watch my previous tutorial. Insert a push button into the breadboard. Connect any of the two legs with the ground. and connect a 10K resistor with the other leg of the push button. Now connect this resistor with the 5 volt pin of the Raspberry Pi which is the second pin. Now take another male to female type jumper wire Connect it at the middle and connect the other end of the jumper wire with pin number 12. So now our connections are ready. The LED is connected with pin number 11 and the push button is connected with pin number 12. Now let's power up Raspberry Pi. Now we are ready for the programming as you can see no keyboard and mouse is connected and it has no physical connection with the laptop or an LCD. Because as I explained in my previous tutorials, we will be using the SSH network using the PuTTY software to write and execute programs. So I recommend you should watch my previous tutorials, the links are given in the description. Which completely explains how to set up your SSH network using Wi-Fi. 
Open the PuTTY software. Enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. And click Open. Enter Pi as your login name. And Raspberry as your password. And click Enter. As you can see, we are logged in. Use clear command to clear the screen. Use the ls command to list all the files and folders. Let's open the LED blinking program which we created in the last tutorial and modify the code so that we can control this LED using a push button. To open the LED1.py, simply write sudo nano LED1.py and press enter. As you can see, the program is opened. Now let's edit this program to control an LED using the push button. So first, let's define a pin for the push button. Simply write gpio.setup 12.gpio.n. Push button connected with pin number 12. Now let's write an if condition to check if the button is pressed. If gpio.input12 equals equals zero. This condition simply means check if the button is pressed. Then what to do? GPIO.output11, true. Turn on the LED which is connected with pin number 11. Let's add another instruction print. LED is on. Let's delete these instructions and use another if condition. This condition is used to check if the button is released or if the button is not pressed. So if the button is not pressed then LED is off will be printed and at the same time we also turn off the LED using the gpio.output function. So that's it. Press Ctrl O to save the program and then press Ctrl X to exit the editor. Write Python LD1.py to run this program. As you can see, the LED is off and you can also see a message on the screen that LED is off. If I press this button, you can see the LED is turned on. And on the screen, you can see its printing LED is on again and again. The program is working perfectly. We can turn on and turn off this LED. Now let's change this program to stop printing these messages again and again. This can be accomplished by using the flag in our program. Stop this program by pressing Ctrl Z. Open the program. Let's add a variable LED underscore state and set its value to zero. So LED underscore state will be used as a flag. Now let's modify these F conditions. And LED underscore state equals equals zero. Now this condition means that if the button is pressed and also the LED underscore state equals equals zero, then execute the following instructions. And then we change the LED underscore state to one. So next time these instructions will not be executed as the LED underscore state value is changed to one. Use LED underscore state with the other F condition as well but in an opposite way. And one more thing, let's add a very small delay for the button debounce. For this use time.sleep function. Press Ctrl to save the program and then press Ctrl X to exit the editor. Run the program. Now if I press the button, you can see LD is turned on and there is no repetition of the message as you can see on the screen. So by using flags in our programs, we can stop the unnecessary repetition of code.
I hope you like this episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.